How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it is Wednesday on this program. You know what that means? NXT 2.0, AEW Dynamite. All of the news here for our Twitch homies and our folks watching along on YouTube. The moment the show started, someone's getting nervous. Old Beer Money here who has a $1,000 bet with me, he writes, Just remind everyone the bet is Braun Breaker must main event WrestleMania within three years. So it is not this year. Next year will be Rock Roman somehow. So that means to win $1,000, Braun must main event WrestleMania 2024. Beer Money, have you already forgotten that WrestleMania is two nights? So he has two opportunities next year and two opportunities the year after to main event WrestleMania. And I also wouldn't get my hopes up about that Roman Reigns rock match coming up next year. But anyway, what do we got to talk about today? Well, Braun Breaker's not the NXT champion at the moment. But he will, in fact, be the NXT champion. Coincidentally, I'm sure WrestleMania weekend. Hmm, how interesting is that? So anyway, we'll talk about Dolph Ziggler becoming the new NXT champion. After doing nothing but jobs on both WWE and NXT television. We can talk about the Dynamite show tonight. There is something new that has been added to the show. And if you weren't thinking of watching the show, maybe you'll change your mind after hearing this. Tonight on Dynamite, Brian Danielson and John Moxley will team up with William Regal in their corner. Who are the unfortunate blokes? We're going to get smashed within an inch of their lives tonight on Dynamite. We'll give you the full lineup for the show. We've got your raw ratings for tonight. We have got a number of other topics as well. I've watched most of NXT, but I haven't seen the main event. We can talk about everything else. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sabravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So how'd it go yesterday, Mike? It was expensive, Brian. It was expensive, but everything worked out okay. So that's really all that matters at the end of the day. I was actually talking about the uh, Brian and Vinny show with... Rob Bartlett joined us last night! Can you believe it? Holy smokes! What a... What a... What gimmick. a night that was. Hey, is it a gimmick? What are you talking about? Hey, look, I'll say this. Uh, the <laughs> Howard Howard Stern, I miss in the morning. Don I miss, who has got a terrible reputation now, uh, was passed away. But he had a huge radio show. People would not know that now. Had a massive radio show in the '90s. Was a personality for a long time. And on this show, he had obviously a cast of characters. And one of his characters was Rob Bartlett, who would come on and do impressions and do a whole bunch of different stuff. And he was oftentimes, if you ever had a chance to listen to that show. The best part of that show. So I'm actually looking forward to hearing him. And good pull by you. Nice way this whole deal with his son, all this stuff, how it got set up, and the fact that Granny was on the line the entire time. Yeah, she sure I was. I need to hear this. She sure was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say a word for like 30 minutes. Hey, uh, we got a new uh, video producer on uh, Wednesday. Doing an excellent job, but I don't like to be that guy. But can we uh, switch me and Mike? Can we put me over there and Mike on the other side? Just to show Let's you exactly this. how petty Brian is about things. You well, have no, because, no idea. Because I, when I look at all the computers and everything, I'm facing this way, and you're facing the other way. So we're actually looking away from each other. Whereas if we, we switched them, we'd actually be kind of, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, much better. <laughs> what do you think about that, everybody? Now, see, only you're now seeing Now when Mike says right something now. weird, I go. Yeah, but, like, you know, what, what are we doing here? We've got a delay here, too. No, we don't. What's going on? All right, let's get into the news here. Uh, I've not seen... Uh, listen, I haven't seen the match, so I'm not going to talk about it. I'll, I'll review it tonight with Dave and tomorrow with Vinny. But uh, God bless the guy. Great worker. I was I was actually very excited when he went to NXT. But then, you know, they do what they do. Career geek Dolph Ziggler defeated former champ Braun Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa in a three-way to win the NXT Championship on last night's Roadblock episode of NXT 2.0. As Ciampa set Breaker up for a running knee, Ziggler's Dirty Dogs teammate Robert Roode pulled Breaker out of Ciampa's path 
And out of the ring, Ziggler capitalized by hitting a super kick to Ciampa, then pinning him to win the title. The roadblock result would seem to set up a Ziggler versus Breaker title match for Stand and Deliver on WrestleMania weekend, a main event over WrestleMania weekend. Hmm, interesting. Well, that announcement has not been made yet. <laughs> Ziggler, career job guy, has held the NXT title, World Heavyweight title, United States title, Intercontinental title, World Tag Team title, Raw Tag Team title, and the SmackDown Tag Team title. You know, it's funny, we were uh, talking about this on Monday, and I was just, I was just flabbergasted that they, they beat Ziggler last Wednesday at NXT because they wanted to find a way to get Chomp into the match. And then they do the rematch on Raw, and they pinned Ziggler again. And, of course, you know, Dave goes, well, he's probably going to win the title. And I was like, yeah, he probably is, but uh, why did we pin him again? And then, you know, the explanation, because we have to have an explanation for every stupid thing that they do. The explanation was, well, you know, uh, Braun Breaker pinned him. And so when Ziggler wins the title, Braun Breaker can, can be his challenger. <laughs> it's like, Braun Breaker was champion, right? So the match has happened, and now we know the finish, which was the champion lost without being beaten. So mm. we need another reason that Braun Breaker should get a championship match? Why in God's name could they have not pinned Robert Roode and then Ziggler wins the title by not pinning Breaker, and you don't need a damn excuse for Braun Breaker getting a rematch. But instead, oh, well, he pinned him in a tag match before Ziggler won the title. Yeah, this guy's, his whole story is that he never wins. Well, now he's the NXT champion. What a prestigious championship this is. Ah, who cares? Seriously, who cares? That's uh, who cares. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They, they decided to go in this direction to get to their story of Braun Breaker standing tall at WrestleMania. Frankly, at this point, I'd have him lose. <laughs> I'd have him lose because I want to see him on Raw the next night after WrestleMania in the mix with somebody. I would rather see him there than Gable Stevenson. Gable Stevenson should be in NXT. He absolutely should be in NXT. If the plan is to debut him on the main roster, I don't know if you're doing him any good. He'll be able to learn on the fly. There'll be a lot of people to work with. He's an athletic wonder. He's a personable guy. I don't think, how can you debut on national TV, be ready for prime time, whatever private training they're giving him, great. But I would put him in NXT, and I have Braun Breaker up on the main roster. The whole, the whole story could have been told a lot better and it should also be hammered home again when you got a guy like Braun Breaker, because we talked about this with Adam Cole in, in a way and with Adam Page, where Adam Page is still establishing himself as a champion. You got these other big stars in this promotion, and Page is, you know, AEW fans, it's not like they don't, in, you know, aren't invested in him, but he's not at that level. Okay, he's not at the upper echelon level. You're trying to get him there. So that's why the, the whole thing with Cole as an opponent, same thing, trying to build him up. The whole deal with Orange Cassidy, the whole story could have been told in a better way where at the end, everybody benefited from this a whole lot more. Dolph Ziggler talking about how big of a loser he is. You know, what are we supposed to be impressed about? His resilience? The fact that he's had longevity? Like, I lose 19 out of 20 matches, well, he told but that us. 20th one, I'm there. He told us. We're supposed to be impressed because he steals the show. He steals the show, and it's like, okay, but the story at the end of the day is Braun Breaker. <laughs> and Braun Breaker, I just, the whole damn thing could have been told differently, and it's just one of those small things that, as a wrestling fan, just annoys me because it didn't have to be done this way, and it could have been more impactful for everybody. Ciampa was, of course, always the guy on the outside of this, but why Dolph Ziggler had to look so weak going into this thing, and then you have a weak guy go ahead and defeat the un the unbreakable Braun Breaker, it just, it just, just to go ahead and tell the story 
story where you're crowning him at the end. Again, it just shows you that none of this means a damn thing. It really doesn't. It's all for the highlight package later on in his career where they can show him holding up that belt in front of all those people on WrestleMania weekend. Like, it's all just a means to an end. It's all content to fill their video package later on when he talks about his career and how tough it was down in NXT and all that other nonsense. It just, I don't know. The story could have been told a lot better, bottom line. So the question on the chat here is if Jeff Hardy is going to debut tonight. I don't know. But I would not debut him tonight. Why? Well, let's look at the lineup for the show tonight. We got uh, Brian Danielson and John Moxley teaming up tonight on AEW with William Regal in their corner. No announcement of an opponent, uh, uh, two opponents yet. So here's the lineup for tonight. And by the way, this is the, uh, this is the follow-up show to... Uh, a revolution. So, I mean, listen, if they're going to get a big bump, it's going to be because of Moxley and Brian teaming up and the fallout from Revolution. You don't need to debut Jeff Hardy tonight. Jeff Hardy can be debuted next week or the week after. And I also notice on the lineup here, there's no match with the Hardy family office. And I think that that is, uh, I would think that that's, that's going to be the situation involving his return. But Sammy Guevara defends against Scorpio Sky TNT title. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a title change there. Thunder Rosa, Layla Hirsch, AW Women's World Title Eliminator match. I would expect Thunder Rosa wins to set up a cage match in her hometown tonight on her birthday. Her birthday's in July, everybody. Do I have to explain this joke to everybody? Clearly. So anyway... I'll do it after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. The other day I was talking about uh, this Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker booking. Couldn't help but notice that they got a show coming up in San Antonio and they booked a match with a bunch of interference. And so it only made sense that Thunder Rosa would get a rematch against Britt Baker in a cage in her hometown. And someone on the Twitch chat said... And it's her birthday. So I uh, I said, it's also her birthday. And then it uh, turns out it wasn't her birthday. Her birthday was in July. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, I'm gonna say every day is her birthday. This is high, high-end comedy here. I, I was going to, I was literally going to do this every day on the show. I was going to say it was her birthday until July. And then on their birthday, I was going to say it wasn't her birthday. I was not going to mention it that day. You know what? Why don't you... Uh call Bartlett back and start working on impressions because I don't know if your stand-up material is going to be able to make it. But anyway, so uh, yesterday I was absolutely bombarded with people who uh, were very sincerely correcting me on Thunder Rosa's birthday. I- I'd given her birthday on like three different dates yesterday. So anyway, you apparently know, that I joke's was, run its course. I-, I was a little late to the game on all this, but did you know, did you know last Sunday night CM Punk came out to his old ROH music, AFI. Did you know that? I don't believe it. It needs to be confirmed. <laughs> Here's the rest of this lineup for... Uh, I'm not taking anyone's word for anything anymore. I've learned my lesson. Double source it, Brian. Dynamite in Fort Myers, Florida. Sammy Guevara, uh, Scorpio Sky is noted. Thunder Rosa, Layla Hirsch, Eliminator. Brian Danielson and John Moxley will kill two geeks. Can't wait for that one. <laughs> Chris Jericho yeah, really. <laughs> versus Eddie Kingston. And uh, Ariel Address, I'm sorry. He's going to address Eddie Kingston. And uh, he's going to put where he lives on him and a stamp. <laughs> and then Paige Van Zandt is expected to sign her AEW contract. That's coming up oh, on, man. on Dynamite here tonight, everybody. You excited for that show? By the way, Mike. Yes. As a resident second in command when it comes to uh, Japanese pro wrestling experts here on this website. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was told, I was told that Shingo and Ishii was better than Brian Danielson and John Moxley. I didn't believe my ears. I went and watched it and I didn't think it was better. But keep in mind, I gave Brian Danielson and John Moxley a million stars. So I, I, I could give uh, Ishii and Shingo like 900,000 stars. So I don't think it was like a bad match or anything like that. But I, I did I did feel that uh, Danielson and Moxley, I enjoyed that match, m- match more 
than uh, Shingo and Ishii. As great as that match was, especially like the last the last five minutes of uh, of Shingo and Ishii was absolutely out of this world. But uh, as a as a whole, from bell to bell, open to close, I liked Moxley Danielson better. And I think that's what it is. They've set the bar so high in some of those G1 matches, especially last year. I mean, this was a great match. But as you mentioned, the last five minutes were outstanding. The rest of it, you know, we believe it or not, you've seen better Shingo and Ishii matches. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't watch it because it was tremendous. But yeah, I actually, in, in that context, I did like Brian Danielson and John Moxley more, especially with the way that it ended and having Regal come out there. But I bet you I can checkmate you on both of those, believe it or not. Ah, because because impossible. if you get a chance... If you get a chance, and I don't know if you've had a chance to see this yet, Kazuchika Okada and El Desperado from day one. I heard it was good. That was, it might be New Japan's best match since the Domes. I mean, I it, I, it was an excellent, excellent affair. Now, again... It probably comes down, it's a referendum on how somebody, how much somebody likes Desperado, but he's also a guy that if you don't watch him much, watch him with Okada because it was tremendous. And what you also see with Okada is, and we talk about this on the brand new Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare, available for sh- subscribers at F4WOnline.com. We talk about the fact that you see Okada in these big epic matches usually build upwards. You see him in these epics with Omega and Tanahashi and their slower builds. And yes, you see the incredible athleticism, but sometimes you forget that this is a guy who came up initially in Dragon Gate's system, who transferred over to New Japan because he was just more, much more of a natural to be there. And you see some of the explosiveness. You see really how incredible of an athlete this guy is because he's wrestling with Desperado and he's matching them move for move. And it's just, it's an excellent affair. And for both guys, a great exhibition on how great Kazucho Okada really is. I'm double sourcing something right here because I don't trust these geeks on the chat anymore after this whole birthday kerfluffle. Let them know. We need an ombudsman around here. Let's see. Okay, it's true. It's not her birthday. Following the destruction of their Tornado Trios match this past weekend at Revolution, El Presidente Andrade El Idolo has called for an emergency meeting of the AHFO Board of Directors on Dynamite tonight. So maybe he is debuting tonight. But you know, you know the other reason I wouldn't have him debut tonight? No one's in this building. <laughs> well, yeah. They're at uh, 2,600 fans right now. Oh. Now, before you panic, the building's only building. s- the only building the building's only set up for 3,300 fans. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's the the point is the building is small. New Japan would call that no vacancy at this point. Yeah. So uh, you know, if it were me, I'd uh, I'd wait. Bigger building, well, bigger here's pop. Here's the other reason why, too, Brian. You're talking about the fact they're having this meeting. This can be the meeting where either Matt walks out, he gets fired, they turn on him, they do something that puts him into the portal to get Brother Nero back or however they're going to play Jeff Hardy coming back. Hopefully it's just as Jeff Hardy. I think that would be more than satisfactory at this point. Save the gimmicks and the teleporting and all the other stuff for a special occasion if you want to. But bring him back as the Hardys. But I think this is the better opportunity now to kind of set those wheels into motion people know at this point jeff is on his way so why not actually you know make some hay out of it look you got ram and i'm not saying save it for rampage or anything like that but you have a show in rampage that desperately needs something maybe you do something today and then you tweak that i i I don't know but i mean you have more than enough time to fill where you don't have to shove this on tonight's show especially when it should be more to show off you know what is hangman page going to do next what is moxley and how are are moxley and and regal and danielson all going to get together all that sort of stuff i I can't wait to see who they're going to face because it's like, okay, do you put them in there with members of the Dark Order who they may have had a history with before and you have a good match, but, you know, they're still dominant? Do you put them in there with two young guys, like, you know, Big Shotty and somebody, and they just kick the crap out of them? I mean, there's so many ways you could go with tonight. It was actually better for them to not actually announce opponents. Let's see. We have got uh, Raw last night, 1.78 million viewers, 0.45 in 18 to 49, 
Uh, show started strong in the first two hours, but had a very large third hour drop. Hmm. Interesting. Did you hear my raw report yesterday? Uh, my raw report was very similar. Excellent mm -hmm. first hour, and that show fell off a cliff, and then that third hour. Yikes! 1.91 million viewers in the first hour, 1.84 second hour, 1.54 million third hour. We have got the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. I did see the two Dusty Classic matches. I watched that and whole brother, stupid show again, hey, and again you didn't see the whole thing? Well, I just missed the, uh, uh, the last two matches, but I'll watch them uh, tonight. But listen, these two, these two Dusty Classic matches. So first off, I told you guys, I told you that Raquel and uh, what's-her-name weren't going to win, right? And everyone questioned well, me. I didn't. And I told you why they weren't going to win, because she was never supposed to be in the tournament in the first place. They booked a tournament, didn't have enough teams and women. So she was supposed, she was supposed to be on the main roster by now. She's, out, she's down there doing wacky vignettes where she's scared of heights instead of debuting in the Royal Rumble. So anyway, they're out. They were beaten last night. They were beaten in the Women's Dusty Classic by... Dakota Kai, who now talks to herself, and Wendy Chu, who naps in the middle of the ring in spots that still never get over! It wasn't good. <sighs> then Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter lost to Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray. So it's Kaylee Ray and Io Shirai versus the sleeper and the talker in the main event. In the finals of the Women's Dusty Classic. Brooks is still a virgin, by the way, everybody, for those who didn't see the show. He absolutely That was brought is. up multiple times. Yeah. Just... Oh, by the way, also, the feud of a lifetime, folks, coming your way. Nikita Lyons and Lash Legend. Because Bro. we've all been missing the lash, uh, lashing out with Lash segments. And... Let me tell you something, Mike. That segment was a horror, okay? It was a horror, but just remember that segment when they actually have a match. You're uh, going to be begging for lashing out. She accused her of having butt implants on national television. She's got that pog. It's, uh, and by the S, Nikita Lyons Road pog. They're all of the jokes. They're, they're all funny. They're all funny to me, at least. I don't think it was as funny as when I said that uh, Chris Jericho was going to put an address and a stamp on Eddie Kingston. I got that one. WWE <laughs> sent an email. I'm just going to say this one without comment. Okay? Say without comment, and then Dom's going to play the music. WWE sent an email to those who purchased travel packages that included WrestleMania access that there will be no access this year. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? You're on the Observer plan. No access at all. Denied. We call it the JJ. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. A couple of other news notes, and we'll do some feedback. What do you want to talk about, everybody? 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter as well as F4W Online on Cameo. Woke up flooded with cameos today, I think because of the Rob Bartlett show. Oh, man, does Bartlett do cameos? He does. Oh, how much does he charge? I haven't checked. Why don't you guys do one together? Well, we live a long way away, and uh, you record it it's on your cameo, phone. It's Cameo, bro. You record it on your phone. You know anything about Cameo? You can do it like, look. <laughs> no, we're not going to do man. a Cameo together. Can we move on? Do it on IG Live. All right, so uh, here we go. A pair of WWE to make stars you money. among the nominees for this year's. I don't want to split my money with Bartlett. I like the guy and all, but come on, I got kids to feed. A pair of WWE stars are among the no my my youngest will only eat steak. <laughs> you know what the problem that is? Yeah, you know, yeah, when you're trying to go buy it, but your your tire shot and your your headlight goes out and all that other stuff, and you're wondering, you know, when can I eat steak? When am I going to be able to eat steak? That's Bro, what... nowadays, like, never. These steak prices are out of control. Yeah, that's a good point. God, I every day, like, I cook lunch and I cook dinner. And every day I'm like, Huddle, you know what I'm going to make for, for lunch today? I'm going to make some uh, whatever. 
cauliflower risotto and a uh, for lunch uh, chicken breast, uh, uh, a chicken parmigiana, whatever. And she goes, no steak. Like Damn, a, like a total little. Wait till she starts throwing lobster into the mix. Oh man, I don't know what it is, but like Paisley never did this, but Holly gets mad and she had, literally stomps her foot. She stomps her foot on the ground. <laughs> she got that from Bro, her daddy. I don't stomp my foot. <laughs> I get mad, but I don't sit here and stomp my foot. She, I th- oh, you want to teach her the Garvin stomp? She literally stomps her foot, <laughs> and she has the the angry face. To, and you think I got an angry face sometimes? Bro, my God, this kid. Mm-mm-mm. She has charisma coming out of her ears is the problem. Hey, got to watch hey, it. Hey. Oh, I'm well aware. I'm too old for this. So I'm too old have... for it right now. I'm going to be in my 60s when she graduates. I'm a dead man. <laughs> can you adopt Enjoy the, Creed the show brothers? while you can, everybody. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah, the I Kids' Choice Awards. Oh, yeah. Sasha Banks oh, and Xavier that, Woods. Good transition. Very good. Both received Kids' Choice Award nominations. Banks is nominated for Favorite Female Sports Star, while <laughs> Woods is nominated for Favorite Male Creator. I guess it's Social Media Creator. Maybe he has a lot of kids. But anyway, <laughs> Serena Williams, Naomi Osaka, Simone Biles, Candace Parker, Chloe Kim also nominated in Banks category. So uh, Austin Creed, however, Xavier Woods, he's got a lot of competition, including Mr. Beast, Ninja, Ryan's World, Spencer X, and Unspeakable. I've never heard of any of these people. Or the other uh, nominees. <laughs> I know I'm old, but damn, nobody? Well, Woods, old. I guess. That counts. Whew. You know, someone made a good point the other day uh, refuting one of your arguments, Mike. Mm-hmm. When you were uh, ranting about how, you know, maybe the reason you don't want to go to two days of WrestleMania is because you're old. Remember mm-hmm. that? Yeah. That's their whole audience! We're on the young, like, far young end of the spectrum of the WWE audience. Their average viewer is 20 years older than we are. I know. I know. I know. Why but am I need... yelling? But they need if people... If y'all listen to me, I wouldn't have to yell so much. They need people a little younger than you who have solid incomes and are able to... Those people don't exist. Those disposable incomes, oh, yes, they do. I mean, that's what pro wrestling is surviving on right now. I mean, it really is. AEW... Folks younger than me with more money? (laughs) Have you been on the internet? (laughs) Well, yeah, that's what's No, Dom, I'm not yelling because I'm old. (laughs) God, I'm surrounded by all these young people. (laughs) By the way, I'm deaf, and you're still blowing my ears out right now, so I can imagine how the listeners feel. But look, look, that, look... We have a smaller group of wrestling fans than we ever have before. They just happen to be more fervent. They happen to be, in some ways, I think a lot more diverse. I mean, you look, people point to old crowds and go how diverse it was. I think it's the same way now, and WWE proves that from their viewership. It's just that you don't see them at the matches. What you see at the matches a lot of times are, you know, the ones, the big events. It's Travelers. And AEW, I mean, they're the way they've been able to motivate and hype their fan base that, you know, there's a lot of people that travel to go see every show. And I remember this with the UFC at the beginning, too, with people when they first really broke, you know, after UFC, what was it, 40 or whatever it was, Vendetta, whatever, whenever around the time Ultimate Fighter and around that period where you had people that were traveling to every show. Same thing with WWE, a little bit, I guess, to a lesser extent from what we hear, but in GCW it happens and plenty of other promotions it happens. And those are the people that are really controlling the whole thing. But as these events are tailored more to those people and they take more from the entertainment world and things that work when it comes to festivals and music events and, and, and all those sorts of things, you know, again, it skews younger. That's what they want to try to hit anyway. So, I mean, that's what these big events, that's what they're going to be based on until people's money runs out, until there's some sort of massive recession or something like that where people just can't travel. And we already had that. We have people, it doesn't matter if they have money or not. They're so stir crazy over the last two years, they'll go anywhere. So, I mean, it's one of those things. Six and one half a dozen and the other. There are going to be changes that are made that some people are going to love. Two days, this, that, and the other. You know, And basically, it's not two days either. It's two days of WrestleMania. But you have like, you know, 10 days of activities, travel, and stress that you pack into that small period. So, 
again, it's not for everybody, but for those that it is, God bless you. I'll be on my couch as well, too. There was an interview with Kurt Angle today. I just got a recap here. He was on uh, Florida, Miami, Florida radio station. And, uh, you know, largely what you'd expect. He misses not being able to perform in front of the fans. Talks about the transition from an amateur wrestler to a pro wrestler. As an amateur, you show no emotion. But in pro wrestling, you have to think about the next spot and show emotion at the same time. It's true. I think he's talking to Indy Hartwell. Oh, Talks about his debut years. and that promo, you do not boo in Olympic gold medals. But anyway, I wanted to bring up right here, uh, everything was going along fine. And then he started talking about uh, WrestleMania. Oh, I thought you were going to see Impact. No. <laughs> he says he still follows wrestling as much as he can. He is excited for WrestleMania. Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair. Kurt Angle says, Charlotte is even better than her father, Rick. You know, every time you have an opinion that is supposed to be subjective, but it is an objective fact that Charlotte is not better than Ric Flair. Wait till Rick hears that. He's going to be mad even though they're putting over his own daughter. What's he going to do? Tweet in all caps instead of just capitalizing the uh, first one on every word? Maybe. You know? I mean, look, he'll probably agree with that. Woo, she's better than me. Woo, come catch me here. I'm selling lotto tickets or whatever nonsense that he's got going on right now. I, uh, You know, hey, look, it's Kurt Angle. He's a nice guy. And I don't, I, the fact that he said that doesn't really surprise me at all. And I just, you know, you take it for what it's worth and, and you kind of move on from there. I would be more interested, frankly, to hear any advice that he would have, you know, just for a guy like Gable Stevenson. And for a lot of these guys who are, again, we would have a lot more amateur wrestlers in the wrestling business over the years of some, you know, repute, except they couldn't emote. You know, they couldn't think and do multiple things at the same time and think about all these aspects. Where's the hard cam? This, that, and all those things. It just, for some people, it doesn't work. And I would be more interested to hear about that when it comes to young guys, your breakers, any of that sort of stuff, than hear Angle talk anything about who do you like or anything like that. What's he going to do, bury people? Nah. This person says, how large will the stand and deliver audience be at noon on a Saturday? Seems weird to try to create a moment for Braun. So, well, you know, it's, it's partially about creating a moment, but it's more about creating content. <laughs> I'm not exactly. waking up. I'm not waking up at 9 a.m. on a Saturday and watching this show. I'm just not, okay? Especially with the WrestleMania later. I got to take hours away from my family. I'm not doing it. I'll watch it later, maybe, or I'll watch the, the top parts of it, but, you know... I understand that when you're Vince, and he talked about it on Pat McAfee, his entire life, moment to moment, night to night and day, is all wrestling. That's all fine. You're the owner, okay? My life ain't like that, all right? So you can create all the content you want, and I'm sure for you it's cool that, like, stand and deliver starting at noon, and it's going to go three hours, and then everyone gets an hour break or whatever, and then the pre-show starts, and then WrestleMania is going to be wrestling all day long, Okay. I'm sure you got a few fans who are going to do that. I ain't one of them. And that's fine. Don't book your stuff around me. Make your money. But don't, don't like, expect me to get up at 9 a.m. to watch that show on WrestleMania Saturday because it ain't going to happen. Well, thank God it's not about the live attendance or anything like that because they're shooting themselves in the foot. There's too much of that weekend. And look, there's far more WWE fans, and, and maybe you're pulling from that. But with so much that goes on, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, when it comes to the live viewing numbers, it doesn't matter anyway. So ultimately, as long as they get views on the show, that's ultimately the only thing that matters, I guess. But, you know, from an optics point of view, I think I'm going to be thinking about, OK, there's probably going to be two other shows running at the exact same time from, you know, on Fight TV and on IWTV. This is going to be on Peacock. And you think about it and it's like even... If you're that amped to watch wrestling where you were going to check out NXT, odds are you probably know these other shows are going to be taking place. And it's hard for me to believe that even though we, you want to see Braun Breaker, you know, stand on top of the world, well, you've already seen it once. So do I want to watch one of these other wacky dream matches that is probably taking place on one of these other shows? You know, from as far as a 
social media standpoint and all that other stuff, they're probably going to have to have to inflate their numbers, at least when it comes to wrestling fans, because again, I think they are, whatever is going to go on, they're going to be the last of those picks. I could be wrong. They could load it up or something like that. But again, it takes people out of a routine now, too, of what they have been doing. And again, how much WWE do you want to watch in one shot? These are all like, again, interesting questions to see how it ashes out. Dude, I don't know if Beer Money sent me this this text, but like, you know, some dummy. So Braun Breaker loses to Geek Dolph Ziggler. Hmm, what was that bet again? They won't ruin Braun Breaker. Have you paid any attention to anything over the last week? Braun Breaker was on Raw. That guy got pushed like a million bucks. He smashed everybody in that match, and he pinned Dolph Ziggler in the middle of the ring with his move. He didn't get pinned last night. They pinned Ciampa to set up him beating Dolph Ziggler over WrestleMania week on an NXT's WrestleMania weekend show. Are you kidding me? And let's be fair. I mean, even though we're looking at this event because it happened last night, it's not like professional wrestling has not done quick title changes where everybody knows what the next result is going to be just to go ahead and tell the story. It might be lazy. You might want, you can be, most times you can poke holes in it, but it's not like this is anything new, again, fortunately or unfortunately. Bro, they went out of their way to protect him over the last 48 hours. Out of their way to protect the guy. And you saw that, and that's the conclusion you came to? Come on. Again, the best... The, I think the argument against that, against you and against you know somebody that would be really believing that they're going to screw up Braun Breaker would be what's happening right now with Austin Theory. That's how they can screw up Braun Breaker. Other than that, and, I, and here's the thing, it won't happen because I think Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman, everybody there looks at Braun. He's just special. He's different. He's one of them. Back in a moment, Observer Live. All right, everybody, back here on the show. Brian Albert is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi. This person says, listening to Rob Bartlett talking about his relationship with Vince, Pat McAfee is the modern Rob Bartlett. In some ways, yeah. Yeah. Although I'm sure McAfee... Uh, I wonder if the storyline's going to be that Vince is screaming into McAfee's headset. That sets up the WrestleMania match. Oh, that'd God. be awesome. Pat McAfee against Corey Graves. You know, I also took away from that uh, show last night with Rob Bartlett, which was... Uh, it was uh, something else. So I dressed up as as uh, uh, Rob Bartlett. I put on a, a suit jacket and uh, my aviators. And uh, I'm watching this show, and I just thought, my God. I look exactly like The Miz. <laughs> I thought about it, and I was like, blonde wife, check. Two young kids, check. White-ass teeth. Check. That really does something to a man's psyche when he makes a realization like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but here's the thing. You got a nice, rich, luxurious, natural brown tan. He's spraying on the orange. It's true. Point to Brian Alvarez. I don't look that orange. Could change. Could change if we keep getting these damn clouds around here. But anyway, if you haven't checked out the Ode to Rob Bartlett show, it's up on my Twitter right now, at Brian Elber. The show's free. The audio is free, and the video is free. I put it up free for everybody because I had so much fun with Rob Bartlett. So go up there and check it out, everybody, after you're done listening to this show. And uh, and that's it. So thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.